Hello there. Welcome to ITV News Central. On tonight's programme, people left trapped in a smoke-filled tower block after it's thought someone started a fire in a stairwell. I tried to go out into the communal area of our floor, up on the 12th floor, and um, I, I literally I couldn't even see the door that was right in front of me. The 11-year-old girl run over on her way to school in Oldbury who wants the road made safer for others. So I think they should act quicker before more people get hurt. How this huge parcel distribution centre in Hinkley is getting ready for the Christmas rush. This whole site covers more than 40 acres and if you take a look up there, there are 3,000 metres of conveyor belts to deal with all those parcels. Beating the winter blues with a stunning lights display at Trenton Gardens in Staffordshire. Good evening. Families caught up in a tower block fire in Birmingham have told us how terrifying it was as corridors and stairwells filled with smoke. Police have confirmed today they're treating the fire at James House in Newtown as arson. It's thought someone set fire to a pram in a hallway. Well, our reporter Lewis Warner is live at the scene for us tonight. And Lewis, what more do we know? Well, this area of Newtown in Birmingham was a hive of activity last night. Ten fire engines, 46 firefighters came from across the city. Now, what we do know is that the police are treating this as arson. Some of the firefighters came here wearing protective breathing equipment to go inside the building to pull down residents and bring them to safety, where they were then treated for smoke inhalation. Today, we've been filming with one family who were trapped on the top floor as they returned home to survey the damage. The charred walls of James House, a tower block in Birmingham, last night thrown into chaos. Shortly before six o'clock, a fire was started in a communal stairwell. Police say they're treating it as arson. David and his family were trapped on the 12th floor with the fire raging below them and smoke filling the hallway. I tried to go out into the communal area of our floor up on the 12th floor and um, I, I literally I couldn't even see the door that was right in front of me to go to the stairs and instantly I saw the light of one of the fire marshal's helmets and they got hold of me, pulled me downstairs. I was just crying out, you know, get my daughter, get my missus. Because How do you feel knowing that somebody did that on purpose? I want to get out of here as soon as I can. I, I don't care where it is, I don't care if it's a hostel, I do not feel safe in there. Crews later found David's partner and daughter in the flat. They sat with them, giving them oxygen until it was safe to leave. I was more occupied about Phoebe, pretty much scared. Um, couldn't see out into the stairwell because the smoke was that thick. Uh, we stayed in the kitchen with the kitchen window open. She was covering her ears because of the smoke alarm and she was, she was scared. The fire was started on the 11th floor of James House, but residents reported seeing smoke in the corridors on the 10th and 12th floor as well. West Midlands Fire Service say somebody set fire to this pram and other items that were found in the staircase. They had to get out because of the fire. David and Mary spent the night at his mother's house. This morning, they returned to see the damage the smoke had caused. You know, the soot all over every single door, every single carpet tile that you can see. You know, when the fire marshal led me back up here after we finally got Mary down, we got what we could, but we could only grab a couple of pieces of clothing and, you know, some stuff for my daughter. You know, there's soot all over my rugs. All of our clean clothes that were freshly done are going to stink of smoke, and, and my daughter is now scared to even touch the floor. It's insane that this was intentional because I, I don't know what, what their end goal was in doing it. Last night, 14 residents, including six children, were led to safety. Those now back home say they face a restless night ahead. A truly terrifying night for many here then. And news of a fire in a tower block will bring back memories of London's horrible Grenfell disaster in 2017. Thankfully here, there were no fatalities, but residents are asking questions about what they really should do uh, during a fire in a tower block. Do they stay put and wait to be rescued or do they try and get out? Well, the fire service say there is no simple answer. Each tower block has its own rules and people should check them out in advance. But they do say 
you should always make sure your doors are shut, especially if the fire alarms are going off. The actual fire safety measures in that block of flats last night worked as they should have done. Unfortunately, uh, people opened doors and left them open, which had then allowed the products of combustion, the smoke, to then to permeate into areas that it shouldn't have got. So again, I'd just like to reiterate to people, you know, if we say to you, stay behind doors and shut the doors, call us and we'll advise you. Well, the flats in this building are fitted with sprinklers, but the communal areas aren't, which is where this fire took place. Birmingham City Council say contractors are now already at work to repair the damage done in order to bring this building back up to scratch. Lewis, thank you. A 22-year-old man has been released under investigation following a crash in Walsall. He was arrested on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving. Baljin de Kaur was killed in the crash on the Broadway on Saturday evening. Her family have paid tribute to her today, saying she brought happiness to anyone she spoke to. Police are appealing for information after a 14-year-old was critically injured in a crash in Great Bar. It happened on Queslet Road just after 6 o'clock yesterday. The teenager is still in hospital. The driver of the VW Golf is helping police with their inquiries. The long-awaited report into the maternity crisis at Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital Trust has been delayed until March next year. It was expected to be released by the end of December, but the team leading the independent review says more files relating to hundreds of cases have now been discovered by the Trust and handed over. They now need to be examined in detail before the final report can be published. Coventry City Council has accused bin collectors in the city of deliberately causing maximum disruption by planning to strike over Christmas. The Unite Union will ballot members on potential industrial action over Christmas holiday and pay. It says the council is increasing tensions and has urged it to return to negotiations. An 11-year-old girl who was knocked down by a car on her way to school wants a crossing to be built near the notoriously dangerous spot. Eva Carpenter was left with a broken collarbone, a fractured foot and swollen lip after the accident in Oldbury on Monday morning. Now she's urging those in charge not to wait until someone is even more badly hurt or even killed. She's been talking to Lucy Capassi. She's putting on a brave face, but keen dancer Eva Carpenter from Oldbury knows it will be some time before she'll be able to perform again. The 12-year-old was hit by a car at this busy junction while walking to school with friends. I must have looked that way first and then I must have looked that way and that split second while I was looking that way that car must have came and then I just stepped out, looked and then it must have just hit me. Filming there this morning, it was clear how difficult it can be to cross. Now Eva and her family want something done about it. Everywhere else that I walk to school, there's traffic lights, so it's easy to see. But there, there's just no traffic lights, and all of the um, there's like ways coming that way, that way, that way, that way. It's everywhere, really. I think I would say to them that they need to act quicker. I think what if one of them got knocked over or hurt, or one of their children or someone in their family got hurt? She's been very lucky, very lucky, because obviously when I got the call from Louise, what went through my head was obviously. I just wouldn't want anybody else to have to, or for somebody to actually do that phone call, but also for somebody else to receive that phone call because I just, well, you know, it was, it was just awful. Perryfields Academy, where Eva is a pupil, told us the safety of our students is paramount to the academy and underpinned by our pastoral care. We would welcome any measures taken that would ensure children in the local community have a safe journey to school. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for Samwell Council told us it was saddened to hear of a child being involved in a road accident, adding, Until this point, records have shown that the junction has had a very good safety record, with no road casualties being recorded in the previous five years. Consequently, despite previous requests, the limited budgets for road safety works have been prioritised to areas where regular road injuries have occurred and would likely continue unless improvements were made. The local councillor said he submitted a petition calling for a crossing at the junction in January, but nothing was done. A new one calling for lights or a crossing this week has had 400 signatures so far. 
accident analysis has been done for three to five years and they say no accident has happened, no one is killed, so we can't do anything. That's almost like waiting for something to happen and then you react to it. And, and uh, you know, so I'm a risk manager myself in a, in, in a financial firm and, and this is not how you assess risk. Eva welcomes that news and says by the time she can walk to school again, she'd like to see the changes made. Lucy Capassi, ITV News. And we would just like to quickly thank Eva and her family for talking to us uh, today and to wish her all the very best with her recovery. Absolutely. Now, tomorrow will be one of the busiest shopping days of the year, with people hoping to buy a bargain on Black Friday. Well, as well as hitting the high street, millions will be shopping online, so delivery firms are bracing themselves for a very busy period. Our reporter Lauren Hall has been to a sorting hub in Hinckley in Leicestershire to see how they're coping with the spike in demand. If you order something online tomorrow, perhaps you're tempted by one of those Black Friday deals. It may well end up here before it's sent to wherever you live in the Midlands. This sorting hub is run by the delivery firm DPD. It's one of the largest of its kind in Europe. It processes parcels here before they're sent out across the region and to other parts of the country. Now, just to give you an idea of the scale, this whole site covers more than 40 acres. And if you take a look up there, there are 3,000 metres of conveyor belts to deal with all those parcels. So it is a big operation. Now, Gavin Dolan here helps to run it, which I imagine is quite a challenge at this time of the year. To be honest, it's the time of year we look forward to most. We've been planning this for months on end. We just eclipsed half a million parcels on Monday and we'll be doing well over 600,000 in the coming days. So how much busier does it actually get on Black Friday? We've seen quite an increase year on year anyway. We've been operating about 30% up year on year. Um, this coming weekend, we'll do three times the volume we were doing a few, a few weeks ago. Now, I know that it is a nighttime operation here. When you finally head home, will you be logging online and looking for some Black Friday deals? Uh, I can't deny I do like a good deal, but I think I'll be getting some well-earned sleep ahead of the big weekend. Of course, a lot of people will be shopping online tomorrow in the hope of bagging a Black Friday bargain. But they are being warned to take care because some of those deals aren't always what they seem. There are absolutely good deals to be had for you as a consumer around Black Friday, but there's a lot of junk as well. So you really have to sieve through it do your research, get online, make sure you know what you're buying, how much you should pay for it, and that way you can secure a good deal, save yourself a few quid before Black Friday. But don't get caught by the hype. If you're not really sure what to buy, better off leaving it. Well, I have to say, this area of the sorting hub feels a bit like Disneyland for cardboard boxes. A lot of the operation here is automated, so you can see there are thousands of parcels whizzing along these conveyor belts, they're then sent down the chutes and out onto the lorries, ready to be delivered to us. And that will be happening pretty much non-stop tomorrow. It's likely to be a very busy day, possibly their busiest yet. And they're expecting to process well over half a million parcels. And it could get even busier in the run-up to Christmas. Lauren Hall, ITV News. Well, Black Friday shoppers can, of course, be a target for cyber criminals and their scams are constantly changing as they get more sophisticated. Well, earlier I spoke to Mike Wills from a cyber and data security firm and started by asking what online shoppers need to think about. Well, the first thing they need to think about is understanding that this is probably the most wonderful time of the year for cyber criminals as much as, as of all of us. And they realise that this is their payday. So there is going to be increased um, instances of this occurring, and it means they can target Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So as a consumer, we just need to make sure that people are being aware. They understand that threats are presented to themselves, and they're pausing and thinking about what they're doing. Because that's what cyber criminals are, are banking on, is that people are going to be rushing for those bargains, are looking and exciting, and they may not be as diligent as they normally are when they're operating online. What impact, if any, has the pandemic had on cybersecurity and the dangers people find themselves in? Well, that's a really interesting question. I mean, when we were all locked down, we were all in our homes, and that meant cyber criminals were also locked down as well. And the criminality has, has gone online, and that has increased um, their opportunity to target consumers and, and businesses. Um, and so the case is they know that people are operating online. They know that people are working from home and shopping from home and shopping from devices. Um, and that gives them additional opportunities to be able to target us as consumers and, and businesses as well. 
Can you just give a couple of quick practical tips? Obviously, more of us are shopping online, as we've already talked about. Um, is it just about taking your time, checking things out? What are the practical things people can do? Well, the first of all, I would say is, is pause, whatever you're doing. If you're trying to buy something online or you've received an email with a too good to be true offer, uh, it probably is too good to be true. So just be pause and be cynical. Uh, and being disciplined is, is really, really key as well. So just take your time, have a look, Look at the email. We've all received spam emails in the path and you can look at it and say, that's laughable. That's, you know, that's so obvious. But criminality, cyber criminality is evolving and developers and designers are being used to make sure that they can properly trick us and mirror uh, the images of, of websites and such like. So again, they are becoming harder and harder to spot. So make sure you're alive to that. And the other point I would say is if you have an email that, that comes in, which is asking you to follow a link, you know, the, the blue text that is underlined, Rather than clicking on that link, use a known browser. There are many out there. We all know who they are. Navigate to the business that you want to go because those deals will be reflected on their websites, not just in emails. And that way you can be sure that you're going to the official website rather than following a link that might take you to a, a cloned website where they're looking to harvest your bank details and your personal information. Uh, Mike Wills with some handy tips there. So take your time, use a known browser. I did ask him actually after that interview, had he done his Christmas shopping yet? He said, no, he'd probably wait until after Black Friday when it's all calmed down a bit. That's, Another a, that's tip. a good idea. And you know what? I, my inbox has been absolutely inundated with people just following on from what we heard in Lauren's report yep. with environmental campaigners saying that Black Friday just encourages wasteful consumerism. So even more reason to take your time, think about it, and maybe just buy the things you need. True. Make a list. Check absolutely. it twice. <laughs> Now, you're watching ITV News Central, still to come on the programme. We'll be live in Staffordshire, taking a look around the latest light display in the region before it's open to the public. It's designed to cheer us all up through the dark days of winter. Yes, looks absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? We're going to be chatting to the guy behind it, how long it took, what the theme is. Well, Christmas obviously is the theme, but you know what I mean. How many lights, all that still to come on the programme. I certainly feel cheered up already. A family from Leamington Spa hoped that there could one day be more targeted support for people with Down syndrome. The Down syndrome bill, which will be debated in Parliament tomorrow, aims to recognise people with Downs as a specific minority group. Nicola and Tom Enoch say that would have made things like getting physiotherapy or speech therapy much more straightforward. As part of UK Disability History Month, Catherine Walker has been taking a look at the bill and what difference it could make to people with Downs. Tom from Leamington Spa is one of 42,000 people with Down syndrome in the UK. This means he's more likely to have health complications and learning disabilities. But Mum Nicola says accessing the right support can be complicated. So from when he was a baby, um, he needed physiotherapy and speech and language therapy, um, which we know that you know if he gets those right, then you know it helps him to develop. But basically there's not a lot of specialist um, knowledge um, out there. So we ended up you know, having to rely on uh, going to different charities and things to access that specialist uh, support. Down syndrome, Bill. Second reading what day? Friday the 26th of November. It's these concerns that led former doctor MP Liam Fox to take action. He wants to introduce a national strategy for Down syndrome across education, health and social services. Well, we now have a generation of people with Down syndrome whose life expectancy is such that it's the first generation that will outlive their parents. And there are a perfectly predictable set of personal tragedies that will unfold unless we act now, particularly when it comes to social care. The new bill will recognise people with Down syndrome as a specific minority group. This means the NHS and local authorities will have to make provisions to meet their needs and take them into account when planning services. Terry Boyle, in for interview. Need to sign him in and allocate a room. Campaigners like Tommy Jessup say they welcome the move. He made his name as the first actor with Down syndrome to star in a primetime BBC drama. He says people with Down syndrome are often underestimated. We are not all the same. We have a different talents and 
person of uh, analyses just like other groups of the people. Hopefully, this um, bill will make all the uh, uh, difference. Carol from the Down Syndrome Association agrees it could make a big difference, but she wants more people to be consulted as the bill progresses through Parliament. The most important thing is that we talk to people with Down syndrome, we get their views. But I do think that we also need to think about people with other learning disabilities because we don't want people with Down syndrome to be considered as a special group. This particular legislation will mean that local authorities have to think more about how they support people who have Down syndrome and pay more heed to the existing laws that are in place. The Down syndrome bill is still in its early stages, but Tommy and so many others are keen to follow its progress. If it's approved, it could make history as the first law of its type in the world. Catherine Walker, ITV News. Now the ITV Evening News is just a few moments away. With the details, here's Mary Nightingale. After the tragedy, the political rows, as it's revealed, a pregnant woman was among those who died trying to cross the channel. Today, more migrants attempted the journey. The Home Secretary admitted she has no quick fix for the crisis. Also ahead, think twice before coming to A&E. The plea from hospitals overwhelmed by winter viruses. And Richard Maidley is forced to pull out of I'm a Celebrity. We'll have all the details of that and more at 6.30. Now, as we move towards the end of the year, the Commonwealth Games are, of course, getting ever closer. And today, the first Commonwealth Games merchandise store opened in Birmingham. The shop on New Street was launched by the game's mascot, Perry the Bull, and aims to get people excited about the games in the city next year. Oh, it's hugely exciting for us today. This is a really our first big physical city centre manifestation, so it gives us that kind of city centre presence. I think it allows people to come in, hopefully buy some stuff and feel proud of the, of the brand, but also just engage with the games. Come games time, we'll have a, a major mega store right in Centenary Square, along with a good number of um, stores at each of the venues as well. So this is really the start of that journey. Now for a nice bit of news. A doctor from Staffordshire has just delivered a baby on a flight to India. And that's despite her specialising in skin conditions. Yes, Dr Manju Paul was two hours into her holiday flight when a call came through asking if there was a doctor on board the plane. Dr Paul, who's at the back of this photo in the white PPE, along with all the medics who happened to be uh, on hand to help. Between them, they helped mum to safely deliver her baby at 29 weeks. What are the chances? Is there a doctor on board? Yes, lots of us. Yeah, there's so many as well. Amazing. All good. Uh, next, the nights are becoming pretty dark and cold, but light displays are springing up all over the West Midlands. A chance to get nice and wrapped up in a scarf and hat and celebrate the darker days. Well, we can speak now to Stuart Galbraith, who's behind the Christmas lights trail at Trenton Gardens in Staffordshire, minus the hats, but he's got the scarf, so that's fine. Um, Stuart, let's chat to you first of all about the lights. I mean, they look absolutely fantastic behind you. Give us the stats. How many? How long did it take? Tell us about them. Give us the stats. OK, so the, the budget for the installation is a million pounds. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of lights, quite literally. Uh, we've been working on the project for over a year. Uh, we've had a crew of 45 people here for over a month installing. Um, and uh, we've got everything from static light installations through to lasers, uh, light trails, um, tunnel, tunnels of light, uh, video mapping. Um, it, it's on a scale I think uh, Trentham and, and indeed Staffordshire will not have seen ever before. We can see, or I think our viewers can see, some of the pictures of what's going on. Is there a specific theme this year? Uh, uh, th there's no particular theme other than it's Christmas uh, and uh, after two years of being locked up it's just brilliant to be able to actually come out and celebrate uh, and see everything that we've uh, we've been able to install. Uh, it was a project that we'd hoped to do last year uh, but because of Covid uh, we had to delay by a year uh, but we're very happy that Trentham's now welcomed us back in this year. 
I think what's great, Stuart, is that we've been debating in the studio this week, actually, and earlier on today in the office, is it too early to put the decorations up? I think you've kind of put that debate to rest because we are all desperate to come and see something festive, to get together with people, to have a great time. And that's kind of, I guess, what this is all about. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we're we open now from now through till January the 8th. Uh, we open at dusk, so approximately 4.30. Uh, it's timed entry through to 9.30. Um, tickets uh, start from £13 for children. Um, and uh, if um, you're thinking of coming, then all I would say is, is try and book early because our, certainly our weekend and our peak time slots are already filling up. I just have to ask, what happens if it rains? Are you going ahead, whatever the weather? Yeah, no, it's a, it's an out, it's an outdoor installation, um, and so uh, you do need to come wearing waterproofs um, or indeed bring umbrellas. Uh, we have lots of uh, points where you can step off the trail um, and uh, get food, drink, uh, warm up. Um, but uh, it is outdoors and you should come dressed accordingly. Uh, can I just qu ask quickly before we run out of time, Stuart, have you got lights up in your house yet? Or are you just sort of, if I see one more set of Christmas lights, I'm going to go crazy? <laughs> so, uh, I haven't actually got them up in our house yet, uh, but uh, I, do, I do have them uh, decorating a boat that we own. So, so Christmas has started all round. Good stuff. I expect them to cost a million quid, 35 people, a month to put up. Uh, we've got to leave it there, Stuart. Thank you very much. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> OK, right. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, it's time now to look at the weather forecast with Alex Beresford. Making the most of it, whatever the weather. Octopus Energy sponsors ITV Central Weather. Hello, hope you've had a good day across the region. It's been pretty fine weather-wise. Lots of autumn sunshine. Not a great deal of heat to go with it. It's been pretty chilly throughout today. And that cold feel is going to stay with us through the rest of this week. Also, weather going downhill somewhat, actually. We've got our first name storm of the season. So wetter and windier conditions are on the way. All thanks to Storm Arwen. That's going to make its way southeastwards as we head through the next 48 hours or so. We're not going to get the brunt of it, but certainly uh, some stronger winds, perhaps touching gale force. Also some outbreaks of rain, as you can see. And it's possible with a colder air mass over the region, up over the tops of the hills, maybe even at some lower levels, we could see some wintry flurries. As for this evening, all stays pretty quiet at first, lengthy clear breaks, tumbling temperatures, perhaps an early frost, but that's likely to uh, disappear by the time we get to dawn tomorrow as we start to see the first signs of this morning settle weather feeding its way in. So throughout the daytime tomorrow, it is going to be much more changeable, frequent showers, some of them could be quite heavy, possibly on the wintry side, uh, more so towards the end of the afternoon. In between, some spells of sunshine, but feeling pretty chilly, maybe up a degree or so on what we saw earlier today. But because the wind is going to be that bit stronger, it probably will feel that bit colder. So wrap up warm if you're going to be out and about. That cold feel stayed with us as we push on into Saturday and Sunday. You can see uh, we've still got the wet conditions with us on Saturday and over higher ground. As I say, maybe even at some lower levels, we could see some wintry flurries, particularly on Saturday morning. Sunday, dry, bright, but chilly. Back to cloudy conditions come Monday. Octopus Energy sponsors ITV Central Weather. Now, as we said, we've been talking about whether the time is right to put Christmas trees up yet. Well, what's thought to be the biggest indoor tree in Birmingham has gone up. Yeah, this one is at Millennium Point. It's 39 feet or 12 metres tall. We've got some stats, actually, because that's what we do. It's got 21,696 lights, more than 1,500 baubles, and it took 12 people more than 10 hours to put it up, working through the night. And it's all about uh, giving back to the community. You know, it just felt like the right thing to do, especially after the last few years that we've gone through, to put something really lovely into Millennium Point that people can come and see and take photographs. And we wanted it to be that wow factor, so they come in and really made them smile. I have to say, all of these Christmas trees and the lights we saw at Trentham are really making me feel inadequate about our Christmas decorations. I might go this weekend. I might take the plunge this weekend. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good weekend. It's the first weekend of Advent, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so. it's kind of allowed. Yeah. We're all right now. Perfect. It's OK. Right, that's it from us uh, for this evening. The ITV EV News is uh, coming up next. We're back with a late update at 10.45. Until then, have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.